Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal production channel here on YouTube and welcome to another Friday review. And today, upon request of Paul of Doomsday Today Records, I am here to review Born and Wire, the third full-length album from Matsunaga Was Right, which was released today through, of course, Horror, Pain, Gore, Death Productions. So... Without further ado, let me get into my overall thoughts on Born and Wire from Matsunaga Was Right. Okay, before I really get into you know, my thoughts and some, I guess, I guess, other sort of facts and everything about this entire album, I'm going to, of course, to tell you or read you the track listing. Again, it's the track listing rundown, so I can tell you folks. What are the songs were on this album? How many songs were on this album? And what is the time length for this album? Since we have 15 songs here, it all clocks in at the length of 7 minutes and 10 seconds. And yes, I read you that correctly, and you can see that already on your screen. It is very short, and it's of course, at times, I guess, typical of the genre. So, let's read off these songs for you, shall we? We have what? Uh, hashtag Danger Steak. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I think that's what it is. It's not number Danger Steak. It's hashtag. Because it's social media, folks. Ah. Making Towns, brother. Once in a lifetime. For a second time. Floss and Super Glue. It's still real to me, damn it. 3P. Scramble Bank House Deathmatch. Matsuhausen. Very nice. Very danger. I think Dash. Very nice. Very danger. Caribbean, Barbed Wire, Spider-Net, Glass Crash, Deathmatch, Born and Wire, again the title track, The Curse of the Barbed Wire Bat, Abyss, of BBQ, Pyramid Scheme, Zandig vs. Danzig. If you want a vinyl release, do it yourself, Mark. And then finally end with Trey Monster Revenge. So there's your 15 songs. And I sped that up as quickly as I can, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, fluidly. Okay, so... Just to kind of, I guess, just to give you a real good idea what the music is. Well, if you're at least familiar with at least, I guess, I'm just going to call this Brutal Grindcore. Well, that's probably all you need to know because of, since for how short this album is, well, it's absolutely buzzsaw. It, it's, it's at buzzsaw speed. There really isn't much, I guess you can say, about riffs or anything. The whole point is basically just beating it through your entire head, or at least your skull, and hope that it cracks in the end. That's basically the way I can just summon up the entire album for you. And that's all you probably need to know. If you want to check it out, it will be on, of course, their Bandcamp page. So, what I can do to lengthen up at least this review to at least hopefully six minutes here is probably run down a lot of... The references, because this is all wrestling based. This is everything, uh, mostly deathmatch related, all that kind of stuff. I mean, just from, let's say, the second song, which is all probably inside shit with Making Towns Brother. It's a reference to one of the bullshit that came out of Hulk Hogan's mouth. Uh, Floss and Superglue is obviously probably towards other deathmatch stuff. Uh, it's real to, or I mean, it's still real to me, damn it. Uh, Actually, the one thing I do want to bring up here is the Matsuhausen Dash, very nice, very dangerous. For all of you who probably don't follow a lot of the modern wrestling, it's obviously a reference to Danhausen, who of course is a former Ring of Honor wrestler and these days is a current AEW wrestler and has been featured on the television program since he debuted, I think, early this year, I believe, or sometime last year. But he's, again, become a, a complete social media uh uh, I guess phenomenon and everything. But I follow him. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think, uh, of course, the curse of the barbed wire bat is uh, self explanatory. I think another one is very interesting is the Abyss BBQ Pyramid Scheme, which has to be some sort of reference to at least Abyss and something he must have did in TNA. Again, he was a former wrestler, these days works as a backstage employee for WWE. These days, I mean, the only time he ever was featured on TV was to, I guess, to somehow manage, uh, or I guess, or be an acquaintance with his former TNA buddy AJ Styles, and that only lasted for a few months there, and it la again it didn't last for too long. Again, Zandig versus Danzig. It is, of course, uh, obviously a play on, uh, you know, Glenn Danzig, and of course, uh, wrestler 
John Zandig, and of course it uses the infamous Jesus! Yes, I had to show it. I had to show it. I can't. Of course, they use that, again, that uh, same clip and everything. Again, meme and everything. Uh, and again, John Zandig, former ZCW deathmatch wrestler and everything. Uh, and of course, if you want a vinyl release, do it yourself, Mark. Is obviously uh, uh, all that play on, I guess, on people who want physical media and to uh, just reference to, pe to Marks, which is uh, usually... Again, it's all wrestling related. And of course, I don't know what Tree Monster Revenge is a reference for, but it's gotta be something. Again, everything is all at least wrestling based. I mean, the whole na band name is a pretty much a a play on Mitsuhiro Mats uh, Matsunaga, who again used to wrestle for FMW, a Japanese wrestling promotion, which would of course would trade some talent, especially talent from like. Uh, the United States, whether it be Mick Foley, uh, I mean, the artwork uses, uh, I guess, one of the more famous uh, uh, photos of Terry Funk and everything, uh, and uh, Sabu and everyone at least had went over there. There's a whole Dark Side of the Ring episode based around uh, the FMW uh, promotion, even though I think the guy that runs it, who used to, uh, he was a Japanese wrestler and used to actually do some stuff over in Memphis in the early 80s. Uh, he, of course, I uh, think is resurrected in some fashion, but that's pretty much all I can run down for you is all the references and everything than really just the music because of it's well, it's what you should at least expect from the genre and everything. That's all I can say. Other than that, it's definitely not bad. If you're one to want to check out the, this release, it's going to be in their Bandcamp page. So with that, that's where I just uh, come down to the actual, again, back to me. And just to give my, I guess, my final thoughts, which again, it's all right, and that's about it. There's really nothing else I can say other than it is what it is. So if this sounds like something that would be up your alley, again, like I've stated, I'm going to leave you a link to the Bandcamp page where you can at least purchase this album as well over there. It's only 8 bucks right now, so physically... And again, it's been released already again today, so it you, you can you can also can listen to it full right now on there as well. But again, if it's not something you want want to, at least it's not something that would be up your alley. You don't have to really check it out. But again, this is all uh, me doing this upon a recommendation, you know. So that's why I'm doing it out, out of a favor. So there it is. I hope all of you enjoyed. This is Harry Thrasher saying I am out. Hope, uh, again, this is uh, saying uh, I am Hal, and uh, see you again soon. Take care, everyone.